Um, so hello and welcome. Um, thank you for that excellent talk on safety culture, David. <laughs> Give me big shoes to fill. Um, just a little bit of background about me. Uh, my name is Holly Stocks and I work for the Stationery Office, previously known as Her Majesty's Stationery Office. We were privatised in the late 90s. Um, we are a non-traditional publisher focusing on delivering print and publishing solutions to a large portfolio of clients. Hopefully you might recognise a few. <laughs> um, as you can see, many of our clients are predominantly public sector government authorities who demand a strong health and safety focus. For example, we work directly with the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency to deliver the Code of Safe Working Practices for Merchant Seafarers, uh, human element, which is being updated to being human and safety critical organisations, and there's a copy on my desk there, and that's just a few of what we do. Um, we also are the official distributor for the International Labour Organisation, the International Maritime Organisation, and the World Health Organisation. It is my job to work in partnership with the HSE to deliver their online tools portfolio. So, I'll just touch on this briefly, so as David already has, but um, safety climate is the perceived value placed on safety in an organisation at a particular point in time. Uh, it's the culmination of perceptions and beliefs that are influenced within an organisation by the attitudes and actions of others. And over time, safety climate, as with any organisation, can change. People leave and the workforce evolves, which influences the climate as a whole. Um, it is important for organisations to understand this because safety climate has the power to obviously em enhance safety knowledge, uh, increase the uptake of safety related policies and procedures and reduce the number of incidents. Bearing in mind that human error accounts for 75% of the marine liability as quoted from the Maritime Journal. Safety culture embodies the value placed on safety and the extent to which people take personal responsibility for safety within an organisation, often described as the personality of a business. Um, it places more empowerment within the hands of the employee, allowing them to react to the climate they experience to live, deliver a shared ethos of standards. And touching on Carl Patrick Hunter's um, talk on leadership, I think that's something that really brings into this. Um, it is Safety climate is directly influenced by the safety climate and is in more complex, requiring, multi, requiring multiple levels of assessment over longer periods of time. So, what is the safety climate tool? Well, it's been developed by health and safety scientists. Um, it's a bespoke online survey tool that allows you to assess the attitudes and anonymously gauge the opinions and perceptions and experiences beliefs of your employees. It delivers you with tangible, quantitative, measurable results. And in simple, it's a way to identify the areas in need of change within an organisation. It does this by using the eight key safety factors, which David mentioned. Um, and then here, this lovely diagram deal, drills down into what those are and other aspects of where they relate in terms of culture and safety. In reality, this tool isn't designed for small organisations where a simple conversation with your staff can help you delve into and answer really on a personal level what's going on. Uh, we have big business in mind and we understand the burden that large organisations face when trying to communicate and identify issues with your staff, um, often due to them operating across multiple locations, offices, ports, ships, as well as larger, more complex organisations um, uh, existing through acquisitions and mergers, finding themselves operating with multiple safety climates at the same time. We fit within the five stages to improve safety culture, which are foundation, analyse, focus, act and evaluate, and actually we really fit within the safety climate tool in two of those. Uh, analyse, so we enable you to gather meaningful results quicker and more efficiently, saving your organisation resources, and focus, which provides you more time to focus on the areas of much needed change. There is a plan that we, we give you to run the survey, um, and the plan consists of plan, build, collect, analyse, moving forward. It's important to follow this plan because when you, you need to do the groundwork, really, within the plan phase before you start to build the survey. 
Otherwise, it can leave you with an abundance of results that you don't really need and that are not relevant to your organisation. Luckily, we have supported and supplied you with a series of how-to video guides and supporting documents to help you along each stage. Within the survey, we understand how important it is for your employees to feel that the survey is coming from your organisation. So because of that, we include your logo up within the help, uh, next to the health and safety executive branding, allowing your employees to recognise the brand alongside the HSE and know that they're working with them. Um, we allow the organisation as a whole to add a personalised introduction to the tool, um, explaining to employees the purpose of the survey and what is the driving force behind it. And we also allow the organisation to tailor terms so that they match the, the terms used within the survey tool. Um, finally, it's about setting your demographics, um, and we allow you to set those specific to your organisation. These can include location, site, department, tenure, job role, ages, types of work. Tenure, I think, being particularly important, because um, often those employees who have been with an organisation over a longer period of time can often have a less favourable, favourable view of safety than those individuals that have been with an organisation for a shorter period of time and have just been through the induction process, highlighting a need for retraining. The survey tool is also available in over 45 languages. So what this does is it makes the survey applicable to all global organisations, as well as ensuring that no member of your workforce is excluded from taking part. And again, like you mentioned, different um, people from different countries working on ships, we make sure that everyone can take part. I have just set up and created an example of a dummy survey. So this just shows you how an online uh, survey would be seen by respondents. Here we can see how some of the demographics would work. And these are particularly important because of our auto-reporting feature, which will enable you to see the results as each survey comes in, and therefore automatically run reports based on the filters that you see. This, again, highlights the need to get the demographics right before you start the survey. So for example, if you did think that you had an issue with a certain port, what you can then do is run a report just for that port and then therefore drill down to the departments within that port and identify the areas that need extra resources. This is some of the examples of the survey questions asked as well and how an employee would be able to pick from strongly disagree to strongly agree and, and how the survey would be the sense of it. Here is an example of the report. <clears throat> As I've mentioned, um, the report will automatically analyze the responses and generate a useful PDF summary of the results. You can then generate the reports across a whole organization or filter by the demographics, location, team, department for more localized reports. Um, these can then be really quickly downloaded and circulated amongst your team, so you can send these out to um, the manager of that certain location, um, and they are updated in real time. This gives you then the ability to set smart objectives for each department to be reviewed each year, fostering greater safety culture. Um, within the report, you get an overall summary for the responses by factor of each respondent, and this is linked to the eight key safety factors. Um, it's broken down by a really easy to understand um, traffic light system, red being unfavorable, amber being neutral, and green being favorable. And as you can instantly see, organizational commitment, health and safety oriented behaviors, and accident and near miss reporting are the lowest scoring factors. And although not the most unfavorable, usability of procedures has a large amount of neutral responses, so may require a more in-depth focus. Uh, this summary gives you, at a glance, a snapshot of how your organization is varying against the eight key safety factors. Then within the report, you will get a breakdown for each factor associated with the questions asked within the report. Again, they are color-coded to show the best and worst scoring questions, in this case for engagement in health and safety. These reports also give you the opinions of each job role, as you can see. So you can see that the warehouse workers and the delivery drivers have a less favorable view than, say, the, the senior management. 
enabling you to focus exclusively on the job roles that may need the support. At the bottom of each factor breakdown, there is a benchmarking score. What this enables you to do is compare your average factor score against other organisations using the tool. Data is pulled anonymously from all safety climate tool users. So in this case, the score of 3.66 for the organisation is higher than the industry average score. You can also understand where your organisation fits within the lowest and the highest score ranges. And by the end of the year, we will have the ability for you to benchmark against your specific industry. So in this case, the maritime sector, so you'll be able to see where you, your organisation is scoring against specifically the maritime sector. Finally, I know we've already touched on this, this is um, one of the many um, analysis and charts that you can create from the data. Um, this is a summary of responses of factor and role. It's very visually impactful and very easy to understand. As you can see, senior management often have a more favourable than the opinions of their workers. I don't understand there, but the data helps you to illustrate to those in management roles that their view of safety culture is often positively skewed and doesn't reflect the opinions of their employees. Finally, we've got some customer feedback. Um, so, NG is a leading energy and services group of 17,000 people in the UK, focusing in energy services and regeneration. They love the anonymity, anonymity of the tool, objectivity and independence. Uh, and as a result, the tool allowed them to reword some of their risk assessments and method statements, making them clear, concise, and better communicated to the operative performing the task. Therefore, you know, some of the legal words didn't make sense to those people on the ground doing the job. It also created discussion with employees around improving accident and near misreporting, giving them an effective starting point for their behavioural safety programme. We have an in-depth case study from Scottish Water, which is actually available on the website. And what they, they found was that they love the simplicity and easy to use tool, allowing for easy comparisons to be drawn and a reduction of administrative burden on those normally serving. <coughs> so time spent running and distributing and working out results are now spent delivering actual change within an organization. To quote them, Getting validation of our performance was very valuable. We now know where to focus our energy and can begin to do something about the things that we've discovered. Finally, Quintech, who are a British security and defence contractor, found that the safety climate tool provided them with the evidence needed through quantitative data to gain senior management commitment to enable them to create a more tailored health and safety solution. Delivering everything to everyone just wastes resources, so they found our tool enabled them to create a sustainable safety culture plan. Thank you. Um, for more information, you can look to the HSE Books page, which will have some information on the safety climate tool, as well as the benefits, video demonstrations, prices and testimonials. Um, there's also some white papers available, which help support making the case for safety climate and culture from the HSE. If you require any further demonstrations, I can offer live demonstrations and take your details at the end and you can do them through WebExes and you can contact me. Um, and obviously any questions which we'll cover at the end. Thank you very much.